that made six million dollars in 2010, plus a bonus of 17 million dollars. Well, the mayor in Chicago gave him 31 million dollars to renovate the Rocker Drive skyscraper. While our schools and parks are falling apart and our libraries are being shut down. Grassroots Collaborative has an ordinance to stop our taxpayer dollars from pulling that in downtown corporate slush funds. Called the Responsible Budget Ordinance, it would send hundreds of millions of dollars from the TIF slush fund back to our schools, our libraries, and our parks, our city, and our county. TIFs are meant to help blighted communities. Does this look blighted to you? Will you call your alderman and tell them to support this now? Yeah. Tip money is our money and we're here to take it back. So when an alderman tells you that there's no money to fix to fix their school fix the schools in your neighborhood, you say you've got tip money and it's ours. When a when a, you go to an alderman, you say, hey, how come the parks keep closing this early? And they say, oh, we have no money. You say. Tip money is our money, and tip money is our money. Standing for decency and equity is not radical. What is radical is a corporate agenda that allows skyrocketing profits for the 1%, while the 99% of the rest of us fight to simply keep our heads above water. What is radical is an assault on teachers who work every single day to spark the minds of children with bellies hungry. What is radical is a city that expects that working families fix this budget mess while the corporate elite run away with all of our money. This is our moment. This is where we fight and say, corporate Chicago, it's time for you to pay your fair share. This is where we stand with public employees like teachers and crossing guards and firefighters who work hard every day to care for our children and our communities. This is where we fight for equity, justice, and the radical notion that working families are not and have never been the problem. All right. We got sold out. We got sold out. We got sold out. We got sold out. I'm Rose Maddox. I'm from Forest Park, Illinois. <laughs> and, uh, what are you doing here today? Well, I'm uh, representing uh, the 99 percent. Um, my partner and I are church. We're uh, church. We call ourselves the church ladies, and we represent the diversity um, of people that are involved uh, or a part of the 99 percent. We're not just uh, you know it's cuts across all religions, all races, all creeds, all sexual orientations, all um, all ages, and uh, we want people to know that. Christians aren't just um, tea partiers, that we are people that are concerned with uh, living the truth that Jesus asked us to live, and that is to be concerned for um, our neighbor, to treat our neighbor fairly and love them as we would uh, like to be loved. And I stand for um, repent for uh, conversion. Um, one, uh, I'm calling the 1% to repent of their addiction to greed and the 99% to repent of their, uh, their apathy. And I think this is a good sign that we're starting to get over our apathy and starting to, to move the 1% to consider uh, what their role is in the problems here in this country. Well, my name's Bill, and uh, I'm here today because I'm concerned about the future of our country, and I'm worried about my children, my grandchildren, and all of the younger people because the American dream is being lost, and we have to do something to convince the future that they have to start representing the middle class in a better and more effective way than what has previously been going on. Today. Steel workers. Uh, so, is there a certain reason why the steel workers are here in particular? Or is there some. Well, some we're, the... we're concerned about workers, the middle class. We're concerned about the jobs where people can make a livable wage so they can support a family and they can acquire the American dream. And we're very concerned about the employment situation and the standard of living for workers. And what do you think the problem is with that? Why can't we get that minimum wage and increase the standard of living? 
Well, it's multifaceted. There's uh, there's issues, bad trade deals, where a lot of higher paid jobs have been exported. There's a problem with our financial institutions in terms of how the money is, a, is spread around and loans to smaller businesses are limited. There's a problem with the way workers are viewed in terms of a livable wage and what needs to be done. Uh, so there's a number of different problems that exist that need to be addressed. And what do we do about it? Well, I think, I think a couple of things. I think structurally, our economy has to be viewed in what it's doing for the middle class and not just for the top 1%, 4%, or 5%. There's been a very significant transfer of wealth that's occurred in the country, and it's like about 82% of what our country has produced in the last 20 years has gone to the top 4 or 5%. And it's been an un un unequal distribution of wealth in the country that has contributed to the problem for the middle class is being squeezed more and more. Uh, we see what's happened with the abuses on Wall Street relative to mortgages. We're seeing people with more foreclosures, more people's mortgages or homes are underwater, they can't make ends meet, and while they're struggling to make ends meet, their employers, many employers are looking at pay cuts, loss of pension plans, reductions in pensions and health care, so it's a number of different problems. Local 703 and Teamsters. I'm a union store. Tell us uh, why you're here today. I'm here to support the 99%. I'm one of the 90%. I'm a blue collar guy. The banks took the money and now they won't do nothing with it. I'm here to support. I'm tired of Wall Street investing all the money. And where's it go? It doesn't go back into the into us, the 99%. The middle class is, is being punished. We built this country, we built the, built the roads, we built the cars, we buy the oil, we buy the pharmaceuticals. <laughs> We're the job creators, not the banks, not corporate. We are the 99%. So uh, what are people doing here today? Just supporting, you see a lot of unions here, supporting uh, union rights. People are taking away collective bargaining because you know it's a war on the middle class. You pin the middle class against the unions, it will be a third world country, be rich and poor. I'm here to support the unions, I'm here to support the teachers, I'm here to support 99%, but I'm not here to support Wall Street at all, that's for sure. So, uh, what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, I guess, I mean, this is definitely a grass, grassroots campaign. I mean, this is how it starts. I mean, look at the look at the Martin Luther King days, this is how it started with him. We just, we keep going, we start legislation, we start putting the right politicians into office to get the right legislation passed through to help the American worker, to live the American dream. It is our job 
to educate the police, educate the police about, why we are peacefully gathering, about why we are peacefully gathering. So the next time when we have, so the next time we have a million people standing up, a million people standing up and demanding change, and change, they stand, they stand in solidarity with us. In solidarity with us. Understand just as we do. The police understand just as we do that our political system, our political system has been taken over, has been taken over by corporations. By corporations. They hate that shit. They hate that shit just as much as you and I hate that shit. <laughs> Oh, no.